In this video, I'll show why the two inputs can be quite useful, especially when used with a linear actuator. So I've got the linear actuator hooked up to the minus and plus here. And note that with a linear actuator, you may need to use a 10 amp power supply. Uh, they can take a lot of current, especially when they're under load. So as you can see, I can control the speed and direction of the motor, just as I would with like a wiper motor or any other motor. So what I'll do is record two animations. I'll record one animation of the actuator extending and then another on a second input to bring it back. So that, that could be like maybe a one button in an escape room or something, some sort of hidden, maybe a hidden uh, button or sensor that they have to activate will open some sort of compartment with an actuator. And then when the game's ready to be reset, the uh, master, the you know, the supervisor, whoever could press the other button to retract the actuator to reset the room. So let's reset the, or sorry, let's record the first animation. So let go. There we go. First one recorded. Now I'll record second one. So we gotta wait till we get to uh, two red blanks. Okay, and when you let go, the actu actuator may retract. That's okay. Just bring it back to the uh, extended position. Now I'm gonna hold till it blinks quickly and then retract and then stop recording. Now you do have to tap the button once to play it. It is playing the retracting animation. Nothing's happening, happening obviously, but you do have to do that to get past the trigger delay or you have to wait you know, 30 seconds or so. It does that so that uh, someone walking by an emotion sensor that may be connected or if you had the trigger jumpered it won't just automatically go into animation after record. All right, button one. That will play our first animation to extend the actuator. Now I can press button two and that retracts it. 